Hi, my name is Mark Rigueur, and I'm excited today to talk to you about how I go um, when I visit countries and build a dashboard um, and do an analysis of a country in, um, in pretty much less than an hour. Um, so recently I was visiting Qatar and uh, I went and I, I was able to get from uh, Qatar a document that talk about the developments. So I studied a little bit Qatar and to understand a little bit where they were growing, what was the key resources, and, and from then, uh, really understand uh, where were the growth drivers. So uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the document. This is the Qatar, there's 286 pages. But if you go through it, you start understanding some of the reasons why they grow. This document really helped me understand what Qatar was all about, what they were investing, their key areas of growth, which is, at the end of the day, before you do an EBI, uh, it's important to really understand uh, what are some of the key drivers. And we'll, we'll take an example of, of Spain. So here they talk about the household. And there is really a few investments they're making in sustainable energy, in education, in healthcare, that gave me a hint of what to look for when I do an analysis of Qatar. So once I, I, I understood a little bit of study a bit Qatar, it was time for me to validate that with data. And one of the greatest places to get data uh, is really the World Bank. The World Bank is an incredible repository of data where you can get data by country, but in this case, I want to get data on the different KPIs that, uh, that I'm interested in Qatar. So for example, here, if I want to know about the GDP, there's different ones. We're going to get the current U.S. And this gonna, is going to give me um, a data uh, repository of GDP for all the countries in the world. I want to get this data in a way that I can play with it and more importantly, join it with other KPIs. So what I do is I left click on download data and right click on Excel, copy shortcut. Then I go into Excel and I'm going to open uh, my workbook and I have <coughs> Power Query where I can just click from the web and simply copy and paste this web page link directly into Excel in Power Query. When I click OK, what's amazing here, this is not a one-time thing, I'm building a permanent connection to that web page. So again, and, and it, it gives me a little bit of a preview and I know data is the one I want, so I double click on it and I'm going to be able to uh, make changes that will be permanent once I refresh. So I can see that I need to bring my data two or three rows, rows up. So I use first row as header. Uh, I do it one, two, and three times to bring my years right on the top of the column. And every time I do something, I'm actually building macro without knowing it. So every time I refresh, it's going to do that. One of the big problems of a lot of the public data is that they have the years as column, which is a bit of a nightmare if you want to do time series. The beauty of Power Query is that you can transform that data and you click a tab called Transform, highlight the columns and do Unpivot. And it's taking those 40, 50 columns and turning into one that I can call Year. And now I can do Time Series. Every time I refresh, it's going to go through that process. A lot of my values are in text format because they're on the left side of a cell. All I have to do is change type to decimal, and now it's going to be decimal. Again, when I refresh, it's going to do that. There's two, three columns I don't need here, so I'm going to remove uh, this column on the indicator code. Uh, let me see, remove column. I'm going to also remove, I'm going to call the value GDP uh, current US, and then I'm going to remove that column called uh, uh, indicator name and even the country code. I'm going to remove that. So I have now my table. I can close and load into my workbook. Now, I've been bringing, so you're going to see that in seconds, I'm going to get 10,000 rows of data, which is the GDP of the last, I don't know, 50 to 100 years of every country, including Qatar. Now, because I'm in Excel, I can add this to my Power Pivot. So Power Query enables me to get data. Now I can mash up that data in Power Pivot 
by joining it to the other tables that I've that I've gotten previously. So you can see that I've got a lot of other tables and I'm not I thought I wouldn't go through the process of getting every single table. This is like a cooking show. You put it in the oven and so you can see my last table that I got that I can join by country name and and so all I have to do is link country to country and uh, I can bring year to year which is the two ways I'm joining all these tables. So I brought uh, uh, energy production and I can bring year to year here. And now I'm adding this to the model. So obviously I brought a lot of other data source and, and from once I have all my data model built in Power Pivot, I can start building my Power Views. And you're gonna see that I've obviously built a few Power Views uh, like on the economy, you can see I have GDP by year, population, GDP per capita, cash as a percent of GDP. These are all the connections I have built to the different uh, power uh, sources. And you can see all the data sources. So and you, can, you, you, know, you can build different tabs on energy. And once you are here, you can interact with this in Excel. You know, if you want to uh, get a certain fiscal year, you can click on 2004. Uh, everything is interactive, dynamic. Uh, you want to look at the energy. You want to look at a certain country. You can interact, and and you can see the different data data sources in that way. Um, one thing we're going to do is load this workbook into a Power BI site, so we're going to be able to even do more with natural language. So what that means is that I can I can go to a Power BI site and I can do get data. And the beauty of get data is that, and I'm gonna make this a bit bigger, maybe so we can see. The beauty of get data is that I can connect to a, a data that is on-premise, a Power BI designer file, so you don't even have to use Excel to load this, and other things like Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, CRM, and this list is growing day in day. And so here, we're going to, if we were to connect to a workbook, we'll choose the file, which uh, I believe is somewhere on my, uh, on, on my February uh, and in the Qatar. And if I were to load this workbook, uh, it will appear uh, uh, in, in my Power BI file. So once we go there, I can, I'm going to be able to build this view. So what this is, is basically... Uh, shortcuts to the different power views I've built. So here we have the GDP. I put that, so you're going to recognize the file that you saw in Excel as we're going to get into the GDP. And you're going to be able to see that, how it renders. So you've seen that file before. Now, if I want to see this as a shortcut, all I have to do is click on any chart and pin it. And once I click on that dashboard, I'm going to be able to go, and I've already pinned it, but you can see that it's probably at the bottom somewhere, GDP, and we can unpin it. So every, uh, every one of them um, is a link to different sources. You know, we have GDP per capita, GDP and population, and here we're going to be able to compare uh, uh, Qatar, which has one of the highest GDP per capita uh, at around close to $100,000, and is a relatively small economy at 200 billion, but given that they have uh, 2 million people, their GDP per capita is very high. Now, um, what's amazing about this is that it has built-in natural language. So if I do sum uh, of GDP by, by year as line chart, maybe we're gonna do for Qatar, and we're going to see the incredible growth that Qatar has had, but we can compare to United Arab Emirates. And you can see um, the growth that Qatar, so UAE is bigger, but we can simply change this to GDP per capita, and you have to know how to type per capita, and you see the story is different with Qatar growing. If this is something you want to see, um, you can just pin even a question to your dashboard. And now when I go back to my default views, <coughs> I'm gonna be able to see my chart here that I can click every month. 
And so we have this ability to connect this really complex uh, workbook uh, and through different mediums, um, but also uh, be able to interact with it because we brought uh, a lot of different KPIs. Uh, we have obviously we have spending. It's you can see that Qatar has grown significantly their investment per person for eight hundred dollars to twenty two hundred, and you can see where twenty two hundred fits. They are around this country. Uh, there's probably thirty countries before them. So all the topics that we have had from that big documents can be reflected. And we can see, for example, that Qatar is one of the countries with the lowest uh, teacher uh, ratio at 9.6 students. And you can see that uh, they have grown and also significantly in turn users per hundred. So all those KPIs, uh, all, these, all these data is available in the World Bank. I can build my data model ma by getting data with Power Query, mash it up with Power Pivot, build the view in power view in excel and consume it in excel but once i bring it in the cloud uh, with power bi i can now interact with it and and really build really powerful uh, uh dashboard capability that integrate natural language um i hope this was uh, uh useful and um if you ever visit a country you can now build a a, a country very fast by the way I went to Spain recently, and I built the same for Spain. Uh, Spain is going through some challenges in the economy, especially with the unemployment rate. And all I had to do is bring the data from the World Bank about unemployment that so that unemployment rate is close to 25%, which went up from 8% to 25% in on the five years. And youth unemployment is close to 60%. And unfortunately, Spain is one of the highest. Those are things that I just read through The Economist. And then I was able to quickly see um, the data and, and validate with facts and, and data some of the articles I saw about Spain. Um, and so that, that left part of, of, and we can see the economy with the GDP going down from 1.6 to 1.4, the population and the GDP gap per capita going down from 35 to 30 in some of the struggle, cash as a percent of GDP. So all of this, uh, you can build different dashboards. I have some about uh, Qatar. I have some about, uh, you know, related to my job. And I have stuff about one of my favorite topics, which is Real Madrid. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs>